Yo, welcome back everybody to a brand new video here on the second channel, and today we got some brand new cards to look at. Yeah, some new cards just got revealed that will be featured in our next set, Temporal Forces, in March. I'm super excited to look at these cards. I wasn't expecting any new card reveals, but nonetheless, I'm excited, man. There are some crazy cards in here. There's some new EX cards. There's a new Gengar EX, a new Incineroar EX, a new Wug Trio EX of all cards. There's two new A specs, which actually look to be pretty darn good. In fact, these two new A specs might actually help rival prime catcher and we got some new ancient and future cards which with the context we have of the other ancient future cards that got revealed in temporal forces a few weeks back this makes these cards look pretty darn good i'm excited man some big changes are coming to the tcg there's even some crazy new item cards which are looking pretty good too this is making me super excited for this new set if y'all are excited too make sure to leave a like on the video and if you're new here to the second channel make sure to subscribe down below and i'll leave a link down below to pokey beach if you want to go check out these cards for yourself and leave a uh, comment down below what you think of these new cards and what's your favorite one. Yeah, over 50 new cards almost revealed, so some crazy stuff. Starting off, we have a new Metagross line. I'm going to be honest with you, the new Metagross isn't anything special. It does, like, damage, nothing too crazy. The Metang is actually kind of good, so it's got the ability Metal Maker. It's a mini version of Magnazone. Uh, it's got the ability where once you're in turn, you can look at the top four cards of your deck, choose any number of basic metal energy you find there, and attach them to your Pokemon any way you like, then shuffle the other cards and put them at the bottom of your deck. Not bad. I mean, putting cards at the bottom of the deck isn't a big deal. The big thing is, this is basically Magnazone, but on a stage one, though you do see two less cards, which is relevant. You could combine this with the new Mallow supporter coming out. And also just playing, like, a ton of energy is fine. I mean, Matang is a stage one. All you have to do is bench a Beldum and evolve it. You don't have to go rare, caney, Magnazone. Again, Magnazone can let you see more energy, whereas Matang lets you see less energy, but you can technically set up more Matang quicker than you could set up a Magnazone. So that's one of the benefits to playing Matang. I think Matang is actually pretty cool, and maybe... Post-rotation, Dialga has some legs with Matang. I mean, Matang, Dialga looks like it could be a deck that might exist. Yet to play a lot of energy, but pretty sure Adamin's not rotating. I mean, that came out at what, Astral Radiant? So a lot of cards are still going to exist for Dialga. Dialga Matang might be the new Dialga Metagross. And this might be better because you're not relying on setting up a stage two, which is nice. Uh, next up, we have a new Raichu line. Uh, it does have the attack Winding Bolt, which for a Lightning and a Carlos, keep in mind, it's stage one. You could play Reversal Energy with it. does 50 damage to each Pokemon with damage counters on it other than this Pokemon. So it's kind of like the Raichu from Evolving Skies. So it does 50 damage to each Pokemon V in play. This one can do it to any Pokemon. Now, Manaphy can prevent this, but if you're already playing like a spread deck, like, I don't know, Miss Magia spread or with Hisuian Braviary, Electrovire maybe, if you take out the Manaphy, you can then use Raichu in the late game to take knockouts. It's not the worst card ever. Um, 50 damage to each Pokemon damage on them does mean you can also hit yourself, so you gotta be mindful of that if you're playing against the spread deck, which I doubt you will be. Spread isn't really popular right now. Um, you know, you might hit yourself, but we'll have to see. This is definitely an interesting card, and, uh, unfortunately, it could have been played in Zorobox, but Zorark will be rotating when it releases. But again, pair with, like, Miss Magius or something. And yeah, we got a new Wug Trio EX. Now, it is a Lightning-type Pokemon, because it is a Terrestrial. It does require Water Energy. It is a Stage 1. It's got the attack Trika Pump, the main you know kind of attack for one water does uh, discards up to three energy from your hand and then you can choose one of your opponent's pokemon and it does 60 damage to that pokemon for each energy you discarded in this way so you can only do 180 you are capped it says up to so you're forced to only do 180 but a 180 snipe ain't bad i mean that's not gonna mew ex not gonna have squawkabilly not gonna have luminion you can finish stuff off you've already hit uh, as a lightning pokemon if you bring in pidgeot to the active spot you can hit pidgeot for weakness in the active spot uh, it's not a bad first attack. It's like a worse Goldango because it's no, like unlimited damage. Unlimited damage would make this actually a pretty ridiculous attack, but 180 cap is fine. The other attack, Tingly Bolt for two water, does 120, and then forces your opponent to be unable to retreat in the active. So not bad. I mean, retreat locking attacks are never really that bad to have in the game, but yeah, not a bad first attack. I think that's the main trait of it. I'm not sure what Wugtrio would be played with. I guess you could play it by itself. Obviously, Manaphy can stop the first attack from working, which is unfortunate, but maybe it could find a home. Maybe play it with, like, Shen Pao. That could be kind of ridiculous, but this could be a funny tech card to play in Shen Pao. But I guess, like, most of the time, if you're playing in Shen Pao, you're already mentioning Manaphy. I don't know. The first attack is really cool. Keep in mind, though, you can't use it on bench terrestrial. So if you're playing against Charizard, you can't hit the Charizards for 180. So keep that in mind. But cool first attack, you know, synergizes with superior retrieval. It's a cool card. Next up, we got a new Gengar line. Yeah, we got a new Gengar line. Crazy stuff is happening. But is this Gengar playable? Well, it has an ability. It's got Corroding Curse, which whenever your opponent attaches energy from their hand to one of their Pokemon, put two damage counters on that Pokemon. So we've seen this ability before. 
on Gengar cards too, and it's never really been that good. Now, us and EXs does mean, well, you'll have a reason to put the X in play. If it's a good enough attack, then that ability will kind of just be an additional cherry on top. While it's attack Trick Step for two Dark, does 160 damage, you may move one energy from your opponent's active Pokemon to one of the bench Pokemon. Not terrible. It, it energy your manipulation can be kind of annoying for the opponent. Like, if you're playing against Charizard and they've exhausted a few fires, you can, like, move a fire to, like, Rodom or Manaphy or Jirachi, which obviously they don't want to have an energy on those Pokemon. So that could be a cool, annoying attack. It is a dark Pokemon, so you're hitting Gardevoir for weakness if that's relevant. I don't know. It's an okay card. Nothing too crazy. Uh, I think there's a couple Gengars that are in the format that you could pair this with as an extra, like, kind of attacker. So I don't know. It's cool. The abilities kind of mediocre they've done this before i wish this card was a little better um but we'll see again that first attack could be kind of annoying uh, or the main well i guess main attack not first attack. It's the only attack it has but it's not a terrible card but nothing too crazy new shifter is kind of interesting here it's got the attack expelling tornado which for one grass energy chooses up to three or chooses three of your opponent's bench pokemon sorry shuffle all of your opponent's other po bench pokemon and all cards attached to them back into their deck so if your opponent has Basically, I think four more bench Pokemon, this attack does work, which is interesting because you choose three Pokemon and then all the other Pokemon that you did not choose go back into the deck. So you are in control of what you're shuffling back in, which is kind of cool. Um, so if you say you're playing against Charizard and their board is like Pidgeot, active Charizard, Charizard on the bench, Jirachi, Manaphy, you can go like Countercatcher, Rodom, and then shuffle two Zards back into their deck. They would keep the Pidgeot, but you'd still put the Zards back. So that's a cool attack. Nothing too crazy. It's a bit gimmicky, but it is a cool attack nonetheless. And it could be annoying. Maybe some kind of weird Shifty Control deck can pop up. I don't know. It does have the attack uh, Enter Loop, which for a double turbo can do 140, and then it returns an energy from this Pokemon back to the hand. Not bad. You can keep the double turbo that you use, which is kind of cute. It is a grass Pokemon, so I feel like this card is just good against Charizard. You're either forcing Zards back in the deck, or you can KO them potentially with the other attack. So I don't know. It's a cool card. A bit gimmicky, but we'll have to see new for alligator now we haven't had a really good for alligator card in a while will this change anything well it does have an interesting ability torrent heart once you're in turn you may put five damage counters on this pokemon if you do this pokemon's attacks will do 120 more damage to your opponent's active pokemon because your main attack great wave for two water does 160 damage during your next turn this pokemon cannot do great wave so if you do the ability you can do 280 damage for two energy honestly not a bad card i mean for a for a two prize for alligator that's not bad i mean that's pretty good damage output 280 damage for two energy is nice it is a water pokemon you could play this with palkia back caliber well yeah, I don't know. Stage two stage twos feels bad, but Palkia for sure could be good. So not bad. I mean, this is not the worst Fraligator we ever got. There was a Fraligator in Fusion Strike, which potentially either discarded your top five cards or your opponents. It was miserable. This one, not so bad. It's it's fine. It's more of a rogue deck. I wouldn't really call this meta. It's probably not going to be meta, but it's more of a rogue deck. It is a cool card nonetheless, though. It is nice to see like a somewhat playable Fraligator. It's a new Whimsicott here. We've had some interesting Whimsicotts in the past. This one has the ability Lifting Heal. Once during your turn, when you play this Pokemon to evolve one of your Pokemon, you may use the ability Heal all damage from your active grass Pokemon if you do discard all energy from that Pokemon. So that's a little awkward. Now, it's only when you evolve this Whimsicott from the Cottony. Now, the effect is nice. Fully healing grass Pokemon is nice. Grass Pokemon really haven't had much support recently i feel like grass pokemon despite i actually was talking about this on my stream earlier today i was saying how grass pokemon have all these really good cards they have like a mini welder they have fortress they have a, a rain dance pokemon on a stage one but yeah grass pokemon just never see play this card probably won't be making it any better because you have to discard all the energy if this didn't discard all the energy this maybe would have been playable if you didn't have to discard all the energy when you evolve it this could have been nice for grass decks but i feel like whimsicott is a little too gimmicky for grass decks um there's a new relic hand this card's actually pretty crazy so it's got the ability deep in memories each of your evolved pokemon can use any attacks from its previous evolution so that's kind of crazy. This has been seen before on stadiums like Shrine of Memories, but we also had a Shining Celebi from back in the day that had the exact same ability, and that was a pretty good card. Being able to manipulate pre-evolution attacks is actually really good. And keep in mind, there are a lot of really cool cards that can abuse this. Any evolving EX can use this, like Stage 1 EXs, Stage 2 EXs, non-Stage 1, Stage 2 EXs. There's a lot of really cool things you can do with this. I can't think of anything off the top of my head, but there's definitely got to be something in the format that their pre-evolution attack can be good. I mean, we've seen this with, like, control decks before, where a control deck will use its big, bulky evolution to copy the little Pokemon. Something like 
the uh, Stoutland Shocklock deck. They had a Lily Pup that let them put an item back from their hand, so they would have to use the Celebi to let uh, the active Stoutland, which blocks supporter cards, to copy the Lily Pup's attack. So that's what we're maybe going to see. I don't know. It's a really cool card. I always like seeing these, like, use attacks from Pay Evolution cards be good. And it's not bad. I mean, I, if, this, if this works with V-Stars, yo, this could be kind of cool with Reggie Gigas V-Star. If this works with VMAX and V-Stars, honestly, I'm kind of too lazy to read into that. It's kind of late right now. But if this could work with, like, Reggie Gigas, I guess that's one thing you could use. That'd be kind of sick. Because Reggie Gigas V has that, like, get angry attack where it does more damage for each damage counter on it. There's a new Incinerary X, like I said. Now, this card is really interesting. It has a really crazy ability. So, Adversity Act. Attacks used by this Pokemon will cost one colorless less for each of your opponent's bench Pokemon. Now, its main attack does require five energy. However, it's a fire and a bunch of colorless. So, if your opponent literally has four Pokemon on their bench, this attack works for a single fire energy, which is honestly kind of crazy. And it does 240 damage, and your opponent's active is now burned, so you're effectively doing, what, like 260 damage? Not a bad attack at all, considering that the ability might let you do it for one energy. Now, the main issue with Incineroar is that your opponent can control the damage output, and that's like the one thing that might hold it back is, depending on if your opponent is smart enough to play around it, but that's the thing. If your opponent cannot bench Pokemon, they're not able to play the game that easily. This was kind of the thing that made Pelican of V-Star such a big threat when Astral Radiance was in its prime is because Palkia punished you for putting Pokemon in play, which is kind of a, an important part about playing the game. Incineroar does the same thing. It punishes you for putting Pokemon in play. So these type of cards are really interesting. Incineroar is a stage two. There are a few other interesting Incineroar and Cat cards in the format. There's a Cat. I think that like Leaves it with 30 HP or less. There's some, some kind of crazy Torracat that does some kind of like 30 HP or less interaction. I can't remember off the top of my head what it does, but there are some interesting cards that can be paired with it. Keep in mind, Relicanth also exists. So yeah, really cool card. Um, definitely a really cool ability. There's a new uh, Giraffe Rig, which is interesting. It's got Psy damage doing 10, 20 plus 10 more damage for each damage counter already on your opponent's active. Kind of like the Basculin Raticate where it does that extra damage. It's not a bad precursor to the... Uh, oh man, I dude, I do not want to pronounce this, bro. It is late. Uh, we're just gonna call it Draft Rigs Evolution EX because I, I just, I'm not gonna bother pronouncing that. I don't want to butcher the name. It's late. I just streamed for four hours. It does have the ability Armor Tail, prevent all damage done to this Pokemon by attack from your opponent's basic EXs. So it's an interesting card. Now, unfortunately, Charizard will still just eat this, eat this thing up because once again, Pokemon, they love Charizard. They don't want Charizard to be countered super easily. If this was immune to all EXs, that would have been kind of insane. Now, it's not a bad ability, though, because you're still immune to stuff like Maridon, Shen Pao. Unfortunately, Roaring Moon would frenzy gouge in you, but you could play Mist Energy if you wanted to with it. So there's some interesting cards that can block. I mean, there's all these new EXs like Walking Wake, Gouging Fire, Raging Bolt, Iron Leaves, Iron Valiant. All these basic EXs will block the, or be blocked by this. Not to mention, as time goes on, when we get more EXs, this card actually could become a bit better. So that's one thing I'll say. Well, this card might not be spectacular right away, and with Charizard being popular, obviously Charizard is just going to destroy this card. This actually could see play at some point when eventually we get more basic Pokemon EXs in the game over time, and they maybe start to dominate. It does seem like we're heading into that like big basic meta, and that could be a good thing for this card. So definitely an interesting card. Don't sleep on it, even though it might not seem good right off the gate. There's a new Roaring Moon, which is kind of insane. Now, this is actually a really playable card. So it's got Vengeful Feathers, which for two dark energy does 70 damage. This attack does 10 more damage for each ancient Pokemon card, or ancient card, sorry, in your discard. Not ancient Pokemon, any ancient card for that matter. That ain't bad. Now, 70 base damage is fantastic. Thankfully, they did give it a good base damage effect, not like 20 base or 10 base or 20 times. It's just flat out 70 plus 10. So you already get to do a nice chunk of damage beforehand. Obviously, you are an ancient Pokemon. You can play Sada, Ancient Capsule, all the other ancient cards, like Brute Bonnet, you can play Roaring Moon EX, you have all these other ancient cards. There's a few new ancient cards we're also going to be looking at very shortly here that this card could be played with. Plays with, like, discarding cards like Squawk Billy, Pokestop, just ways to discard ancient cards. This is going to be doing a lot of damage, and I definitely like it. I think it's a pretty playable one prize attacker. So we'll have to see if this card ends up seeing play. Um, we got a new Great Tusk here. It is an ancient Pokemon, keep in mind. There's a new Coridon card, which I will look at in a sec. For some reason, it's not up on Poke Beach for me, but I have it up on Twitter. I'll pull that up in a sec. But we got Great Tusk. Got Crust Collapse, which for a double Turbo Energy discards the top card of your opponent's deck. However, if you played an ancient supporter from your hand during this turn, discard three more cards from the top of the deck. So if you play a Sada this turn or the other ancient supporter card, 
that I think is coming out, you can discard four cards, which ain't bad at all. Discarding four cards isn't bad. Uh, you can also put a double turbo on it, build up your bench. For a mill attack, this isn't bad. This actually could be pretty good in Roaring Moon, or any Ancient deck for that matter. Because what you can do is you're playing against like a control deck or something, or a stall deck, you can use this at the end of the game and aggressively mill them. That could be kind of cool. So there are some cool things this card could provide for those uh, ancient decks, where all of a sudden, maybe if you're playing at Snorlax in the late game, you can come out of nowhere with a Crust Collapse and deck them out. So there are some merits to that. I did want to look at this new Coridon card here, um, which isn't up on Poke Beach. New Coridon right here. So it does have, uh, I guess I got to zoom out a bit. It's got the attack uh, Primal Battering, uh, which does 30 damage times the amount of your ancient Pokemon in play. So it's just one of those Pokemon that does a bunch of damage for each ancient Pokemon in play. Um, not bad at all. Um, you know, you're doing, what, 180? It's not terrible. Not too bad for a one prize beat stick. Could be the partner, actually, to pair with the Roaring Moon, potentially, in some scenarios. But yeah, not a, not a bad card. It does require fighting in a Cullis, but if you're already playing, like, an Ancient deck, you're probably already playing, like, a mix of energies with inch, with Earthen Vessels. So, there is that. So, three pretty good Ancient Basic Pokemon right off the gate. And that's what I was happy to see. I was happy to see these new Ancient Basics that actually could be playable. You know, these one prize Basics. Uh, and then we got the future Pokemon. Futures, you got to keep in mind, they got the new Iron Crown. Keep in mind, there's some other new cards we're going to look at in a sec for these Pokemon. So we got Iron Valiant with the attack calculation. For a Psychic, look at the top four cards of your deck and put them on top of your deck in any order. And then you got Majesty Sword, which for two Psychic and a Cullis does 100 damage. If you play a future supporter card from your hand during this turn, this attack does 100 more damage. So there aren't the best options for future supporters. There's a few of them. Obviously, there's Turo. I think the new Mallow card is a future supporter i can't remember look it's late at night but either way you play one you do 200 damage and as a one prizer 200 ain't bad you can pair this with iron crown ex to do more damage you can play this with zatu maybe to accelerate energy and another card we're going to look at in a sec to maybe also accelerate some energy to your pokemon new maridon here too with speed peak for a colorless energy does 40 damage search check for up the two basic energy and attach them to your future pokemon anyway like that's pretty insane. I'm not going to lie. This might be what Future needed to be playable. So a lot of the Future cards we've seen, like Iron Hands, Iron Valiant, they're cool, but they do require a lot to attack. I mean, Iron Valiant Zatu is not a real deck right now for a reason. Iron Hands requires four energy. That's a lot. There's times where Iron Hands sometimes just can't get there. Having a way to start energy to your Future Pokemon is really good, though. And again, we have a lot more Future Pokemon in this set from that revealed earlier that could all be played with Speed Peak. You're also getting a little bit of damage in play. I mean, 40 damage. Again, play that with the Iron Crown, and you're able to do like 100 to 130, whatever, depending on how many you have in play, for one energy. Well, you're also putting energy into play for your attackers. That is pretty deadly, I'm not going to lie. This card actually is a great addition to the future mechanic, and this could be what future Pokemon needed to be playable, because now they have a good energy acceleration attacker that is a great early game pressure. It can knock out basic Pokemon with uh, the Iron Crown's ability to do like 70 for one. Pretty crazy stuff. Not a bad card at all. Definitely a big upgrade for future decks for sure. Pokemon just love Maridon for the record. <laughs> we got Iron Treads, another future Pokemon. If it has a future booster energy capsule on it, it is both a fighting and metal type. I mean, okay typing. Again, it'll be good against Maridon. It'll be good against... Um, Shen Pao, if that's his play. So then it's got Passing Wheel for a Metal and a Colus. It does 60 damage. Move one energy from this Pokemon to one of your bench Pokemon. Not a bad attack. Again, it is future. You can boost the damage with it, with the Capsule, with the Iron Crown, and stuff like that. It's not bad at all. So yeah, these three future Pokemon are all pretty playable. I think the Iron Valiant is a really strong single prize one-hit KO attacker that can KO like other basic EXs pretty easily with damage modifiers. And there's the Maridon, which is a pretty insane card accelerator energy. And then there's Iron Treads, which could give you some type coverage in your future deck, which is kind of sick. Because there's no, I don't think there's any, there's no future fighting Pokemon, I don't think. Well, there's the new Iron Boulder, I think. Yeah, there's the new Terrakion card. I think it's called Iron Boulder. So maybe it's good. I don't know. Either way, not bad. We got some crazy new items. So we got Order Box. If you use this card, your turn ends. Search your deck for two items, reveal them, put them in your hand, and then shuffle your deck. So it's okay. Not bad. Nothing, uh, nothing too crazy. Um, this could be good in Charizard, I guess. If you play it turn one, you can get, like, two rare candies. And if you don't get Iono, you're, like, guarantee the rare candies already. Could it be better than Rodom? Maybe, maybe not. 
Uh, Hand Clipper is a ridiculous card. So there is a very interesting Amoongus card that I saw that might actually make this card kind of insane. So Hand Clippers, both players discard cards in their hand until they have five cards left. That's a pretty insane item. We've actually seen this effect on supporter cards before. There's a Hue card from way back in the day in Boundaries Crossed where it did the exact same effect on a supporter or and that's crazy that they put this on an item card i'm not gonna lie that's kind of insane so there's an amoongus card that if you discard it with the effect of an item card uh your opponent discards their entire hand so essentially if you play this with amoongus you can make your opponent have a zero card hand bro that's kind of that's crazy bro i this could be a good control card obviously there are cards in the meta that are like okay if i have like a bibberal in play i don't really care about hand clippers but making your opponent lose their entire hand is insane there are so many crazy plays you can make with that and just making your opponent lose resources they don't want to lose is ridiculous this card is kind of scary with that amoongus card i'm not gonna lie it's kind of a ridiculous combo this card is like really good in general it's also very good for control that's one thing that I hate is like they just gave Snorlax another really good card to play because now you can force you can like force your opponent to lower their hand if you can infinite loop them and you could use this against Snorlax though too. That's the other argument. So it's like this could be good in Snorlax but also could be good against Snorlax. I don't know. It's an interesting card for sure and it's kind of insane they put that on an item card. A new emergency board dropped and I'm a fan of this card. I'm always a fan of these pivot items and that's what this card is. It is a pivot tool card. Uh, this The Pokemon this card is attached to pays one colorless less to retreat if that pokemon has 30 hp or less it doesn't have a retreat so basically if you're if you're active for whatever reason has 30 less hp it will not be able to use this tool and it will have no retreat however it does give you that one less retreat so immediately this is going to be played in lost box it'll give comfy a free tree pivot i'm always a big fan of these now these free tree pivot cards usually have some weird effect where like a skateboard you could use it even if you were asleep or paralyzed or whatever there was air balloon which just flat out took two retreat and then there's float stone which gave you a free retreat and now there's emergency board and there's u-turn board also so there's these really cool like board cards that give you retreat pivots and i'm a fan of these cards i'm a fan of these i think these are very healthy cards for the game this would have been really good with mew from celebrations unfortunately that did rotate however we got bianca sincerity heal all damage from one of your pokemon with 30 hp or less remaining yo if serena ever becomes bdif right there boom serena ex gets countered by bianca not for real this is an interesting card not sure how good it will be but it could be good in a deck that can tank a hit you have to have 30 HP or less. So you have to, like, literally just hold on and survive the turn. Maybe this could be good in, like, a, a stall, like, Articuno strategy. I don't know. It's an interesting card. I'll have to see. Uh, Eerie is kind of a powerful card for control. So Hand Clipper could be good for control, and so can Eerie. Look at your opponent's hand, choose two items you find there, and discard them. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that is definitely a supporter card. I'm surprised they printed this. This is a very strong supporter. It's kind of given me gets to see flashbacks, not gonna lie. Now, this could be really good against Charizard, because if you're playing against Charizard, you can discard two rare candies. That's kind of insane. You can get rid of all kinds of items. Like, that's pretty powerful, dude. Being able to discard items is good. Now, it's not trainers, thankfully. That would have been a little too good. Items are still good, though. I mean, again, you're milling potentially switches, rare candies. That's pretty good. That is a really strong effect on a supporter. And, uh, well, if Snorlax would ever survive rotation, which I think it will, to be honest, this is going to be a big reason why Snorlax control will be good, is this card exists. This is a... I mean, now you have Misfortune Sisters and Eerie to get rid of switches from your opponent's hand. That's kind of disgusting, not going to lie. All right, we got two new Ace Specs, both of which are for future and ancient Pokemon. We'll start off with Drum of Awakening. Uh, draw a card for each of your ancient Pokemon and play. Okay, not bad. For an item card, you can draw a bunch of cards for each ancient Pokemon and play. So, debatably, depending on what you got in play, you might have a Greninja, Radiant Greninja. You might have a Squawk in play. You might have a Mew EX, maybe a Moltres. Well, actually, Moltres rotating. But you might have, like, two, maybe three Pokemon that are not ancient. So maybe you're drawing, like, three to four cards of this. However, as an item card, that ain't bad. Being able to draw a bunch of cards featuring ancient Pokemon in play on an item ain't bad. It's, a, it's extra draw support. Now, all of a sudden, Roaring Moon can see even more cards in the turn. They have Sada, Pokestop, Greninja, Squawkabilly, and now they have Drum of Awakening. You can also play this with Darkrai in Roaring Moon to get it back, so that could be kind of cute too. So definitely a pretty strong trainer, and I like this because this could actually replace Prime Catcher in a deck like Roaring Moon, because if Roaring Moon wants to play an Ace spec, I mean, they'd either play this or Prime Catcher. This might be the better option because you get to draw more cards and set up a lot more easier. This could also be really good in the combo energy switch Roaring Moon deck because now you can get even more pieces quicker. 
All right, we got Reboot Bot. Another fantastic A spec, especially for the future Pokemon. For each of your future Pokemon in play, choose one basic energy from your discard pile and attach it to that Pokemon. Yeah, that's also pretty ridiculous. Energy acceleration for future Pokemon on an item. I saw this coming. I thought we were maybe going to get like a future energy with like a Colors Machine. And honestly, there's a world where we might still see a future energy card. Keep in mind, I think that honestly still could come in the future. Get it? Ha! I'm hilarious. No, but for real, this card is really insane. Both these cards are kind of ridiculous. I would argue Reboot is a better card. However, man, this is a wild card. I mean, now the sudden, you can build up Iron Hands even quicker. Like, even if you're playing this in Maridon, just to get one extra energy on Iron Hands alongside Generator and potentially, like, EXP share or whatever, that's kind of crazy. This is a really strong card. And then, obviously, if you're playing this with any other future Pokemon, like the Iron Valley we looked at, that Maridon, um, you know, Iron Crown... Iron Valley DX, there's now energy acceleration for them, and yeah, that's pretty cool. Future Pokemon ever having energy excel is insane. I mean, you can build up our higher enhanced potentially in one turn. If you go double turbo reboot bot with like an energy switch, you can get a turn one iron hands. That'd be kind of crazy. So definitely a pretty wild item card. And I like this because these two items are specific for future and ancient Pokemon, but these future and ancient decks can now abuse items and they might not want to play prime catcher now which i think is very good i mean everyone freaked out when prime catcher got revealed even i freaked out i was like oh, i don't know about that but this actually might balance prime catcher because these ace packs are also very very good but there you have it those are all the new cards revealed we do have some illustrator rares and stuff we got a shiftry um relicant some really cool ones here to look at we got the iron crown in front of the moon that's a really nice artwork we got the uh Iron Boulder, I think it's called. Iron Leaves. Which, for the record, I said Iron Leaves wasn't very good in the last video. I think it's actually not bad. You can play this in, like, an Arc Pile deck or something. So, I don't know. I want to give this card credit. It isn't bad. It hits Charizard for weakness, right? So, who knows? Uh, Raging Bolt Illustrator Rare is crazy. Let me know what your Ill favorite Illustrator Rare is. Gouging Fire is not bad. I like the colors on them. Raging Bolt definitely looks the best, though. Um, but there you have, folks. Those are the new cards. Again, some pretty crazy cards. All these Ancient and Future cards, I think, are going to upgrade the Ancient and Future decks greatly. And with all these other big basics we're getting, the new EXs, some of the new items, I'm really happy to see a new Pivot Tool card in the format. Yeah, really cool stuff. I'm excited for these new cards to come out, man. Especially we saw, like, you know, Buddy Pop and get revealed to Mist Energy, the other cards. I am glad we're just getting all these new cards that are actually going to impact the game instead of it just kind of being a weak sauce set. I'm glad it looks like these new cards are going to impact the game greatly. Some of these new cards are crazy, like I said. I think I said crazy nine times in this video. I don't know, man. I'm heading to bed now. It's getting late, but hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think of these cards down below. Leave a link to Pokey Beach. You can go check out these cards yourself. Thanks for watching. Have a good rest of your day, and bye-bye.